Now breathe in, breathe out. And now repeat after me. No, no, more, more. Perfume, perfume. Faster, no, no, more, more. Perfume, perfume. Is that a new Dior? Chill, breathing, breathe. Oh no, okay, sorry. Bonjour, bonjour, fragrance lovers. This is Clémence. Why did I do that? I talk about fragrance and welcome back. In today's video, the top of my list ranked. This doesn't make sense. I mean, we're talking about new fragrances only today. And then I will tell you what I didn't like. My number seven is Aqua di Parma Bergamotto di Cabela Buia. This is apparently a new limited edition fragrances, but I'm 100% sure there was a Bergamotto before. Am I? Am I just not? Apparently this one is different. I don't know what's going on. Like if you can explain to me, I would really appreciate, but me, I don't understand. I didn't get it. I was like, okay, this is new, fair enough. I love it. I love a bergamot smell, especially when it's from Aqua di Parma. You know Aqua di Parma got their range of fragrance, which is Bergamotto Fico, that is my favorite. You got Arancia something? Ar I can't remember. Mandarino, Mand Mandorlo, Mandorlo. That's it, Mandorlo, that I really enjoy, a bit more softer and sweeter. Bergamotto, I love it because it's got the power of a lemon, so very sharp and citrusy, but slightly more greener. So it gives something more natural to me and more easy to wear. There's always that hint of spices going on, but I do really smell Italy, the coast, whenever I smell that, and I love it. So. Really enjoy that and the packaging is to die for. Six, Paris Edinburgh by Chanel. You know it, I've worked for Chanel during a long time and for that reason, I love their fragrances. Uh, the new Paris Edinburgh is from the collection Les Eaux de Chanel. So we used to have Paris Venise, Paris Deauville, uh, Paris Biarritz. This was for me what was missing for the collection. We had a softer vibe with a softer velvety vibe with Paris Venise, something really sharp and citrusy with uh, energizing with Paris Biarritz and something a little bit more aromatic and like a, a basil and orange cocktail with Deauville and this one is absolutely stunning to me because it's a bit more masculine in masculine in a way because you've got that cypress kind of note foresty note without being smoky it's not like a vetiver dry fragrance it's not dry but it smells a bit that foresty vibe pine vibe I would say gives something like a more barber shop type of fragrance and I think uh, this kind of smell for summer are really lovely classy as well of course it's norm it's called a no so just to warn you a no is like a fresh cologne so it doesn't mean it's not meant to stay super long on you so if you come in there and you're like oh it doesn't stay that much I'm like yes it's normal it's made for it these are also 125 milliliters of fragrance so it's meant to sp be sprayed a lot and to refresh you something that basically you take with you in your bag and you spray and you spray that's a different approach of perfumery number five is Jo Malone Scarlet Poppy I was having a lot lot of expectation for me I was keeping having like uh, people talking to me about this fragrance and be like oh it's amazing blah 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 am I a bit too high or too uh, let me full face up makeup pyjamas it's Saturday come on so yeah now Scarlet Poppy I love it it's really velvety it's nearly like that musky floral vanilla like very cocooning uh, creamy I can really smell the fig and tonka that always get that vanilla notes and always with Jo Malone fragrances they smell a bit like a candle like they have that waxy smell it's really pretty and I think it's not a difficult scent so your everyday scent if you're looking for something ultra velvety comforting 
slightly floral, a bit sensual, you're gonna love <sighs> Number four, amouage material. So this is something that you've seen quite a lot in my channel because I interviewed Cécile Zarouki on the perfumer. If you wanna go have a look, you can go now. And I do wear that a lot. I know that when it's really hot like that, I'm probably not gonna wear that in the day because it's quite like an oriental, very warm, a lot of vanilla absolute and blah, blah, blah with some spicy, it's very luxurious. So I won't wear that in the daytime, but for the evening, I did really enjoy it. It does have a really, really nice balance with something a bit more um, citrusy at the start, which make it like a nice contrast in the fragrance. So it's not too heavy, nicely balanced, uh, very sexy, sensual, but still kind of classy to me. I think I'm gonna love that during fall. We arrive to the top three. Number three, Dior back color a proper proper oriental i love the plummy touch of it it's quite um it's not intoxicating but it gives like a quite like heavy trail and i think this fragrance is amazing for someone that is starting in the oriental journey the warm side fragrance that wants something like sexy sensual but they will still be able to like to wear daily i think it's not too challenging to start your journey in the oriental so in that way i really appreciate because sometimes i want to send that I know I'm gonna wear a lot. Very gourmand, essential. So it's kind of what we expect of a man to smell like nowadays, like for a woman. Like before, the sexiest fragrance was the barbershop, and now I feel uh, the sexiest one or the more uh, warm trend nearly like a cocktail vibe to me, nearly boozy, but that's probably the plum. The plum always gives that to me. I was finally really happy with the Dior release. When I smelled that, I was like, well, yes, challenging, strong. It's a lot of things to discover in my skin. It was moving a lot. Really loved that. So well done. Number two is a Chanel. <laughs> You're gonna be like, no, Clemens, no. I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. And it's Le Lion. So a lot of you guys ask me for a review of Le Lion and I think for me like it's a very challenging fragrance. It's not something that you will give as a gift, no. You start your fragrance collection, you're not gonna get Le Lion, no. You need to have the trained noise. <laughs> I had some reactions from some friend that's been trying it and that not the most into fragrance and I didn't like it because it's too much for some people. Most of the people that I know are in fragrance loved it. It's something different and we love to see that. Lots of Cistus Labdamnum. If you don't know what it is, it's basically a plant that smells like leather. So we use that in perfumery to give that very sharp leathery tones, nearly animalic. So it's a very strong ingredient and usually it's a bit more balanced. In Le Lion, it's attacking, it's there, but it's called Le Lion, so it needs to be there. It's a lion, you know. And what is really nice with it is they balance it with that lemony bergamot tone at the start that is very sharp. So you have this lemony tone, sister slap down and lever together that gives something ultra powerful. Honestly, like. I sprayed it once and I was really surprised because it's not usually the Chanel touch to do something like that. Like I sprayed it and I could smell that very smoky tone around me and like I was like, okay, yeah, I, I am, I'm not gonna spray it like 10 times, like <laughs> no. And usually that's what I do, but with this one, definitely no, no. It's super sexy to me. It's for someone that's got a lot of charism, a lot of personality that want to express a bit that darkness, but very uh, classy uh, tone. If you know a bit the collection of Les Exclusives, it's probably going to be in between a Coromandel Oriental sexy fragrance and Sycamore, like very classy, earthy tone and smoky. So it's a bit in between the two, but very, very leathery with Cure de Russie as well, because there's leather notes in there. But it's really impressive. It's something that stands out to me out of the collection. When I smelled it, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Olivier Polge in the classic collection does something like very elegant, you know, delicate, blah, blah. And suddenly it comes out with Missia, Boy, 1957, Le Lion, that are standing out so much. For I don't say that because I've worked long time for them, but I really love it. My number one. My number one. L'Orchestre Parfum Ambre Cello. If you follow my channel, you know I love L'Orchestre Parfum. I love their fragrance. I've been talking about Piano Santal all 2020. <laughs> I love it. It's If you're looking for a milky sandalwood fragrance, you say, oh my god, bunny! 
That rabbit! Amazing. I think he's hungry. Yeah, we're gonna eat soon. You just wait until the end of the video, darling. So, I love the fragrance. They released a new fragrance that is called Ambre Cello. And really, guys, I need to... Why is it not straight? Amberry fragrance are really on trend. Like, you've been seeing, like, Grand Soir. This is, I think, my favorite now. <laughs> this amber is just so poetic it's musical it's moving it's strong without being heavy well balanced with some citrus it's totally unisex but you can smell it's a lot of kind of waxy smell slightly myrrh benzoin so vanilla ambery tone but with that very um nearly smoky very mysterious tone like a little bit smoky you know nearly like religious but not like you think like not in a bad way like something that is you know like you can't catch it you know something that i can even wear during summer hot days because it's really nicely balanced every time i re-smell it i rediscover it I smell that very like slightly green tone at the start with the bergamot the vanilla is not like a a sweet vanilla it's not sweet like it's a proper vanilla you know like it, it smells like a slightly woody uh, tone darker tone it leaves the sillage absolutely stunning it's super sexy i've been lucky enough to have one of the golden uh, bottles but honestly like try it because you like try l'orchestre parfum you won't regret it i've done a full video on them as well i will put that in the description box but the dream the dream i'm never disappointing about their fragrance now let's talk about my biggest disappointment it's hot. i'm sorry it's too hot <laughs> hottest day in uk like i don't know you but i'm sweating and i've been to the gym yesterday finally i could actually uh, go to the gym and exercise after so many months uh so uh i feel a bit uh, you know like uh, even uh, there's still some muscle in there. Anyway, we're gonna go quick on that because I don't have much to say about each fragrances, but just to let you know, I didn't enjoy the journey. My first one is a Bayredo Mixed Emotion. So uh, there's some fragrance that I love from Bayredo. Moyav Ghost, Baldafric for me are staples, really, really good. But I don't feel really connected with the brand. Like it's not something that is my vibe. This fragrance or less is more style. I'm more like more and more style. <laughs> gave me exactly what the title was like it gave me mixed emotion I took the fragrance you smell it and you like next next two ones are from tom ford and saying that is uh really really hard for me because tom ford is one of my favorite designer house ever i love them to my soul i was expecting so much from soleil brûlant uh, because I've got Soleil Blanc, I've got Soleil Neige, and these are one of my favorite fragrances. I would say a lot of character, you know, with, with that very exotic ton, a tone that is characteristic from the Soleil collection. A spicy uh, pink pepper, I don't know what was that. Not impressive at all for me. I smelled it and I was just like... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I think it was just too simple and I, I was expecting something more complex uh, and I could only smell that bitterness with those spices. And the next one is Tuberose Nu. I love tuberose. Tuberose is the most fragrant flower in the world. So for me, when you say a tuberose fragrance, I'm expecting boom, creaminess, milkiness, heaviness, um, or cloudiness, you know, but like it's there. Tuberose is the strong flower, it needs to be there. Like, if you want to be delicate, you take some jasmine. It's like the packaging, it's white, pure, innocent, nice, uh, pretty. It's not a bad fragrance, it's nice, it's pretty, but it's Tom Ford. I was expecting something a bit controversial, like exciting. It's like a, a silky veil of tuberose see the, what they wanted to do but not for me after you know like if they wanted to do something like that who am i to tell something you know what i mean next one is from dior so after an amazing release like toba color uh dior i'm always 50 50 with dior there's some release that i'm like yeah dior from intense fahrenheit oh sauvage love 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 and suddenly there's a fragrance in the collection like sauvage miss dior the new ones i'm like Bleh. 
Au rouge Trafalgar, I know it's been so popular, but me, I was just like, mm, not impressed. That's my point of view. But which, it didn't work. So with the private collection, I'm expecting more because it's from the private. I'm always expecting something a bit more creative and stuff. It didn't work. I smelled it and I was just like, nice slightly salty uh, that marine touch with a lot of i would say citrus accord it's beautiful i think for the season it's amazing that they release that right now and i think i would enjoy to wear it you know i would enjoy to wear it but it's just it's not super great actually those kind of fragrance are usually my stuff because uh, i think there's some, some type of coconut and mineral note and I, I like that mineral touch in fragrance but why did I have an accent? Mineral touch. Where, where is that coming from? But yeah, like, I'm. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> no argument. I just think it's too simple again. Like, I'm expecting more. Tell me about your biggest disappointment. What are the latest releases that you really enjoy? For me, the latest release I want to try is the new YSL O Electric. I can't wait to try that. So let me know in the comments, like, which are the ones I'll be happy to see that. And I will see you very, very soon. Bye now. Viens, le temps mène dans mon paradis bleu.